everyone. Welcome to another episode of IDW's Creator Spotlight. My name is Sam Meggs. I'm a writer for IDW and I am so thrilled to be joined today by the wonderful, talented, absolutely unmatched Casey Gilly. Hi, Casey. Hi, that was a lot of intro. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can live up to that. Well, I <laughs> certainly think you do and I'm sure our viewers do too and I'm so stoked to talk to you today about Dungeons and Dragons Ravenloft, Orphan of Agony Isle. What can you tell us about it? Well, um, my favorite thing about the Ravenloft world is that it is all horror. So while in other realms of Dun Dungeons and Dragons, there are certainly elements of horror, this is a world that is entirely based on it. And all of the different realms within Ravenloft have a different type of horror that they are focused in. Um, and our book, uh, d d players will already be familiar is set in Lamordia, which is this realm that is sort of inspired by like Frankenstein and Mary Shelley and lab experiments gone wrong. And it follows um, Dr. Victor Mordenheim, who is this really terrifying and uh, I think lovable, um, but I'm a horror writer. <laughs> uh, um, overseer of Lamordia and her latest creation, which is a very sweet and uh, amnesiac young woman who does not know how she has come to be where she is. Um, so I think that that is, the, I think that's what I can say without spoiling anything. Sounds like nothing could possibly go wrong. Everything will oh, be absolutely so fine. Very yeah. normal. Yeah. Absolutely. It's going to be fine. Really great ending. Nobody's upset. <laughs> it's weird. It's totally fine to have like your little, little kids read this book. Don't Great. <laughs> we'll put that on the cover. Uh, that's perfect. Thank you so much yeah. for that. <laughs> uh, what do you love about being able to write horror in a D&D &D setting? Like what makes that special and interesting for you as a horror writer? So there, um, there is something about horror that I've loved since I was very young like I am that little kid who would have picked this book up and just been like oh please tell me more awful things I was a like rabid Christopher Pike fan when I was yes. far too young for those books I totally understand yeah yes. <laughs> and I think that you and I are probably of a, a similar age where we grew up in really like the golden era of YA horror where every like probably second or third book you picked up was a horror book or had yeah. a supernatural element and now we're all weirdos um, yes, we are. <laughs> what I love about this in the D&D setting is it, it, as a writer, it's tricky, but it's also so fun is that there is no problem you can't solve. So just like in playing D&D, &D, the more creative you are, the more open-minded you are, um, the more sort of uh, irreverent you are, the better your game is going to be and the more you can advance things and the more you can really work out some things that have maybe scared you. Uh, I am not a experienced D&D player, but when I have played, what I've noticed is that this, it's a really great place for people to experiment with personality traits that they want to embody or places that they haven't really been able to explore in their real lives. And to me, that's also something that's really great about horror is it can be immersive. You can be scared. You can confront things that you'll hopefully never confront in real life and start to figure out who you are through that. And I feel like the world of role playing and the world of horror has so much similarity and that there's a lot of self-discovery that can happen there. That was such a good answer. I'm <laughs> shook. That was great. I was like a big D&D &D person myself. Like that makes so much sense to me. I absolutely love that. Do you have a, a favorite part or panel from the first issue? The first issue has, so it's kind of an interesting setup. I did not write the main story of the first issue. That was written by Zoe Quinn, who um, who didn't did not continue to write uh, further issues, and I wrote the side story in it. Um, when I wrote this side story, I thought about what is one of the things that scares me the most, and I have an almost five year old little boy, uh, and all of my fears completely reset themselves when he was born and turned into just the worst things any parent can imagine. Understandable. I, thought, I, I really want this to be relatable and I want it to feel like there are stakes here. It's the first issue. And I worked with Corinne Howell, who is an absolutely beautiful artist. 
when I looked through the issue, I cannot pick a favorite panel, but what I can say about her artwork in this story is my favorite thing is the acting that's in it. That's something that's so crucial in horror. And in a comic, it, it's kind of difficult to write horror because you can't control the pace at which the reader reads the book. Uh, in a movie, you can control how fast everything goes, but in a comic, I feel like you have to put so much thought into where the eye rests and where the page turn happens. Yeah. Horror. And Corinne captured that so well. When I read it with the final artwork, I had full goosebumps and it was something I wrote. And it is inspired by one of my bigger fears with my child. Um, but with that, I think it's still something that people who don't have kids can still relate to. And uh, people who don't like being in the water can still relate to. And people- Very who spooky. Ever had to act quickly in a moment of danger can also relate to. In my opinion, nothing spookier than whatever is under the water. Everything I'm just throwing it out there. Terrible. Truly horrifying. Yeah, absolutely. Casey, thank you so much for joining us today for IDW's Creator Spotlight. And you can pick up D&D, A Raven Loft, Orphan of Agony Isle as of June 29th, 2022. So go pick up issue one if you can and get the pants scared off you. <laughs> because I think that's the kind of distraction we all need right now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Casey. Thank you.